All right, so here is a Philco model 37-630 or 630 from 1937. Um, it is a pretty large tabletop tube radio. Here's my hand. It's pretty pretty good size. Um, let's see. Here's like a, a notepad. So pretty good size radio. Um, I think this is uh, probably one of the more higher uh, end sets for this year. Uh, it's got two shortwave bands on it. It is, it's got a tuned RF stage. And let me see here. You got a, if I hold it up right, <laughs> uh, we got a RF stage with a 6K7G, which is just 6K7, G means it's a glass version of it. Uh, 6A8 is our detector and oscillator. Um, then we have um, first IF is a 6K7. Second IF is uh, 6Q7, which is the second uh, the detector and the first audio, and then we have our single 6F6 uh, audio output tube. Uh, a lot of those 6F6s are used in push-pull designs. This one just has a single audio output, probably good for about three watts or so. And then our rectification is held uh, handled by a 5Y4. So anyway, it should be a pretty good performing set with having a tuned RF stage. Um, so anyway, um, this has a uh, this was sent in for repair uh, by uh, Mr. Keith, the guy that uh, owned the previous set that we worked on in the prior video. It was a Philco uh, 40 145. Um, and he uh, he got that radio back in and was so pleased he uh, he sent this in saying that he he bought it online and uh, it has a low audio uh, problem. Uh, radio seems to receive okay. I mean, I've only checked the broadcast band. I haven't checked any of the shortwave, but uh, seems to receive okay as far as sensitivity on the broadcast band. Um, but the out audio output is really low, so. All right, here I'm gonna demonstrate our problem. Our volume control is all the way up, uh, and we are going to be participating in and enjoying some of the things that uh, the Plymouth Rock Foundation are doing. So as you can hear, it's uh, pretty weak. Um, you can tune across the dial, and it picks up stations, but the you know the audio is just really low. So. We need to get in here and figure out what's going on. Uh, again, this is another one of those uh, recapped and restored radios. Uh, looks to me like it's been refinished before. So they did a pretty good job on it, but they didn't put the lettering back on, which is a dead giveaway that this has uh, been refinished. They didn't put the water slide decals back on these. They they sell reproductions uh, that you can buy and put them on. Uh, I did that in a, uh, a video on a Holocrafter's radio um, that I did a while back. I think it was a 38 Charlie. Uh, you can go back in the prior videos and watch that where I repainted the cabinet and uh, put new water slide decals on it for the, uh, the controls. Alright, so anyway, let's, uh, let's get into this and disassemble this thing and see what we're working with and it looks like they've got both the both the IF stages run off of that single 6k7 there and then we move down to the detector and first audio which is a 6q7 all right and the radio we're working on is very similar to my personal uh, Philco 37630 or uh, 620 sorry we're working on a 630 
Uh, this uh, set is needs a speaker. Uh, I still got all the parts and stuff to it. I need to put the faux finish back on it. I think I've got the faux finish sticker in that little uh, envelope there that's propped up next to it. So anyway, it's, I think the uh, the chassis is going to be very similar to this one. I did this one four or five years ago, got it going. Uh, but this radio did not come with a speaker originally. Uh, when I bought it, it, it was missing. I used uh, a field coal speaker that I had that was pretty similar in value to the original, but it wasn't the original. It never really sounded right. Ended up needing that speaker for another project and ended up taking it out. So this is kind of on the, uh, <laughs> the transplant list. So I uh, need to get a speaker for that guy. And uh, anyway, yes, this is a Sony Trinitron from 1969. Uh, I think it's got a weak picture tube. Anybody wants it, uh, let me know. Uh, it's free to a good home. Somebody's put a modern power cord on this thing. They got a polarized newer power cord on this thing. It looks like some antenna wire with it too. Here's the back of the radio here. Kind of dark. So let's get that chassis out and see what uh, awaits us underneath. Oh, All right, well here it just goes to show you it's, it pays to play around with the uh, connections on tubes. Uh, I got this thing out of here and just kind of started wiggling on stuff. And Then they play what they need to play. So everybody's got their... So their we've got spin. sound back again, but... As you know... There's going to be eight more Start wiggling where? around on this. It was going in and out. So. About my hotel. Okay. See, it starts going out. You know, we all sacrifice. So right? we got a connection summer, issue. HBO. On the top uh, of this tube. Home, so I get them in the hotel. So I'm all excited. It's the last night. I'm thinking I'm going to watch a movie. That IF tube. It looks like. Channel and. All right. So I've clean this up here with a um, wire brush but I've got a, a worn out uh, bore cleaning brush for like a 22 so that'll work out to uh, to clean the inside of this connector out here alright we got it up on shortwave it seems to be doing pretty good Got that tube connection cleaned. Also cleaned the pins on that tube and uh, that little snap. So, so this would be 10 megahertz here, which would be WWV. There's not much happening on the first shortwave band. It's during the daytime, and these bands, you know, this is basically, you know, 75, uh, you know, 70 to 70, about 75 meters up to 40 meters, which is 2.3 to 7.4, um, is pretty, uh, pretty dead lately. Uh, you might really start getting something up around 40, but the, those bands are pretty dead lately because of the time of year it is. Uh, the band conditions are really poor down here, especially on 75 and 80 meters. hear this station all over the place this religious station with this guy talking I mean he's everywhere see there he is again <laughs> he's all over the place 
Oh, there's a number station. If anybody knows anything about that station or, you know, any anything you've heard or, you know, share your stories uh, down below. I'd like to hear them. Uh, this is <laughs> the, uh, the number station is always kind of interesting. A lot of people say it's, you know, secret government code and, you know, all this stuff. So, Comment below. Let me know what you think about that. All right. All right, so now we're under the bottom side of this radio working on this tuner unit. There's a few capacitors in here that weren't replaced. Um, one was right here I've already replaced. It was right there going to ground. Ground lug is there. And we got two of them. If you can even see them. They're right down here. You can see them right there. The two brown ones there. Well, one of them went here and I disconnected it. I can't physically reach that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off here. And ground them here. There is two of them. There's a point one that goes this way and a point five that goes this way. The point five connects right down there where that brown resistor is. That black lead on the right down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip that and I'm just going to run a capacitor from here. I'm just going to I'm going to ground it down here in the chassis. So. They just, they're just bypass caps, but uh, Keith wants them replaced, and so I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to get the old ones out, but I can snip the lead and just run them and uh, ground them. Just a simple .05 and then a, a .1 to here. Don't have a .1, but I have two .47, so we'll do that, make that work. Alright, so we got our capacitors done. We got this one over there where that one over here was at and this one over here where this one was at you just got them basically running back down in here and grounded here and they work just fine so next step is to we need to replace the this is a sub chassis here it's floating it's not supposed to ground out to this part and it is um, uh, the grommets on it are fried out which normally that's pretty normal for these that 80 year old rubber disintegrates all right so the grommets we're talking about is this one here and that one and there's there's one on the back here too that's what these are supposed to be replacements to me these there's two of these, and those fit here. To me, these look a little narrow. I don't know. This one looks a little thicker here. Looks like that might actually work better, but this one's actually for the back. So, yeah, there's two of these. So, And uh, these are for here. To replace these, even though these original ones are really don't feel that bad but uh, i guess they give it to you in that kit there all right there's our crumbling old chassis washers and there's our new one there new one there and new one in the back so that that should help our sub chassis here to float correctly and the, the thing is, is, as these deteriorate, they also sag. So I've seen some of those just war slap out, and this won't, this shaft here actually sits low in the cabinet here where it goes here. You'll have that come out, and it'll be way down here. 
because of you know the uh, the crushed grommets and uh, you know it actually affects the alignment of this thing. I, I don't know why they built this thing this way, but that's just kind of the way it is. So I had to move this cap out of the way, so we'll put that back in there. Put those two screws back in there and uh, mount that back in. Uh, I, I I guess people do this. I, I don't know, so they don't leak or so they'll dry out. But I, I wouldn't have really done that. But that's just me. All right, so back on this Philco. Um, it's been a few days since I've been out here messing with this thing. Uh, one of the issues we have is uh, the volume control is not working properly. You can't turn the volume off. I'm not a fan of daylight saving. Now when six rolls That's all the way down. It does adjust, but it will not turn all the way down. So, got a part to fix that problem. Um, apparently, there's a, a place called Old Antique Radio Parts.net that sells replacement potentiometers for these sets so took the liberty to order one here so that's going to be our potentiometer that's going to go in here so we need to get that replaced um, this one is kind of hacked up let me show you what I mean all right so this is the one that's on here this shaft here was taped into here and they've just got a it looks like one out of a TV or something. It's got a little knurled ends on it, spline type of shaft on it that kind of reminds me of an old TV control. But anyway, this deal here is um, they had uh, black electrical tape over this to hold it together, and this bar slipped out on me a few times. And so we're just going to go ahead and replace that uh, potentiometer get that done and then i'm gonna have to go in here and correct what they did here whoever recapped this radio here didn't um didn't take the old uh capacitor out of the circuit i don't know if you can see that but that little wire right there is going still going inside there so i have a feeling this has not been recapped or the, it has been recapped, but they just tacked on a new capacitor on top of the old one. So we need to get that old one out of the circuit. And in order to do that, we're going to have to take out all that sticky black tar stuff in here and replace that, uh, or just remove it, get it out of here, and get the uh, old capacitors out of here. All right, so here's the finished product. We had to turn the potentiometer this way. The original one was these three legs here were on this side and the one leg was over here it was reversed this this makes more sense because the connections they had I don't think they had it connected right this is the way it's supposed to connect it's supposed to be a ground on here your two caps hook up here your resistor hooks back here where it's tapped at so that's the way we're gonna where we're gonna run it there so let's see if it works now all right Yep, that seems to uh, turn the volume all the way down, so. It comes up and down real smooth, so. Got that problem resolved. Alright, now on this Bakelite block capacitor, they just use two regular capacitors. One from here to ground, and one from here to ground. Um, but they didn't disconnect the old stuff out of the circuit. I've already, I just gutted the stuff out of the circuit and still got all this tar crap all over the place and on the end of my screwdriver there, but I got it all out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these out and I'm going to replace them with some safety capacitors for all those safety minded people out there that would crucify me if I didn't. So just to let you know, we are going to use safety capacitors. Alright, for all you safety minded safety capacitor people, there you go. Safety capacitors. How did the world ever live without them before? 
I don't know how our generation ever, previous generations ever survived without pay, without safety capacitors. There you go. So it's a few weeks later and sorry this video is taking so long to make but we have been waiting on uh, Keith wanted a replacement dial for this he wanted to replace it with a one of the reproductions they make and they have really been taking their time shipping that thing out I still haven't got it um, I was going to wait on that to to finish the rest of it but that's not going to be coming that I can see in the near future so we're just going to go ahead and wrap this up he says he'll put that on himself whenever it comes so um my goal is to get up under here and re uh, finish up some of this um uh, these capacitors uh filter caps that the whoever recapped this radio did I'm going to clean up some of that work um and insulate some of those filter caps that they put in there with some heat shrink and clean up that and uh, then we'll check the tubes see how they're doing and um, I think that's gonna be about it on this one so and this is what I'm talking about this type of stuff here where it's exposed uh, all this needs to be cleaned up try and get rid of these exposed uh, leads here this is awfully close to that ground there it's just not a good idea to do this kind of stuff this right here they put some here but uh, there's nothing to keep that from shorting to the chassis there so we're gonna get some of this cleaned up all right got this uh, cleaned up here and here to here and these little wires here that uh, my lens is fogging up all right got it unfogged so hopefully uh, these were connections here that went to the original caps they were just left open so we uh, insulated those so Hopefully this will provide a little bit more isolation protection even though that's a negative I still put a lead over it this positive here was very easy to short out on the chassis here so we didn't want that so we got that taken care of so now I believe we're gonna check the tubes and see how they look all right this is our 6q7 which is our what is this a first audio or second detector first audio tube this tube seems a little flaky to me it checks okay on emissions but when you thump it and all that you get a drop and reception and then it picks back up and all that so i think this tube needs to be replaced i think it's you know flaky so i'm gonna recommend he get a new one of these but it does check okay on emissions well, here's a Philco 6K7. It checks excellent on emissions. About 800 out of 1,000, so we'll definitely keep that one. It's in pretty good shape. Here's a 6K7 uh, out of the tuner unit there. This is our RF tube. It checks over 800, about 8, uh, 820, 810 there, so definitely a good tube all right this is this is our 6a8 which is our um, detector and oscillator there and it's over 800 about 820 there so good tube all right and our 5y4 rectifier tube coming in at about 730 not not bad at all 
All right, and our 6S6 audio output tube is coming in a little weak. It's about 560 and climbing slowly. But, yeah, I'm going to recommend he get a new one of these. He's kind of a perfectionist, and I, I, you know, I, I'd go ahead and get another one too. You know, might as well. Probably don't cost that much. And, by, and this, I've let the 6S6 sit on the warmer for a while longer now it's come up in the green but yeah i'd say that's kind of a sign of a tube it's still on the weak side it takes forever for it to get strong enough to test strong so and i'm gonna go ahead and recommend he replace this i mean he could probably run it in there for a long time and not have any problems but while it's in the shop i'll go ahead and tell him he's going he I recommend another one. I don't think you'd have a problem with that. All right, we got it all back in the back in the cabinet here. Um, I'm not sure whether he's going to replace those tubes himself or whether he wants, you know, what he wants to do if he want if if he wants to order them or what. But uh, anyway, the radio plays fine, uh, you know, like it is. So I'll let him make that decision. Got some interference source on the radio not exactly sure where it's coming from haven't been able to locate it it's causing that buzzing noise it is receiving stations all across the dial and it's during the daytime so it's doing pretty good you tell you you really can't beat these this Philco chassis these in the 620s and 630s and 610s 37 620s, 630s, and 610s are, are great chassis. These things are super sensitive and they, per they perform really well. Age, drinking. There's 970 coming in crystal clear. Me like him. That is, he is not interested in simply saving a shadow meters working correctly. <laughs> You're listening to Rush's you see, in Review. It slowly backs off and um, closer it gets together, the stronger back, the right signal. To, uh, Old school. When I look at the time. See, they've got 1290 back on the air again, finally, after about six months being off the air. Think how the formula. Uh, hey, that local radio station company, if, if they have an AM station off the air, it might get back on in four, five, six, seven, eight months a year. Last time they were off the air, I emailed them and told them it's off the air, and the guy acted like he didn't even know it was off the air. All in the first quarter, they go up 10 to 3, but... Uh, he will break that record looks good on the broadcast band we're not going to pick up much on this middle band because it's during the daytime and these lower bands don't propagate very well but we are picking up a little 40 meter ft8 signals right there so tells me it's working not gonna make these band scans too long people complain about them so being too long so and 
tipo de productos financieros es que el dinero invertido... This is the obviously the upper shortwave band right, right on the top scale there. So it is picking up, you know, all across all the dials, so. Seems to be working pretty good, so. I'm going to leave it right there. All right, hope everybody enjoyed it. Appreciate you watching this video on this Philco 37-630 from 1937. Thanks for watching.